Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. I start the arrangement with an introduction that is not very different than the original introduction. It's kind of a short chord progression that sets the rhythm and sets the stage harmonically to what will come later using some of the same chords and just waiting for the melody to come in. Although there is a little bit of an internal internal instrumental mel uh, melody that kind of, again, foretells the what is about to come. My first position is an E major 7 in the 7th position. It's a plain, well-known drop 2 type voicing, which is a kind of a jazz voicing. And I don't play a whole bar, I just use my first finger to play one note, that is the E on the 5th string, 7th fret. Also the B on the 4th fret, so, excuse me, 4th string, 9th fret. This D sharp, 3rd string, 8th fret. And the G sharp on the 2nd string, 9th fret. Although really, I do hit that top note, but the ins inside melody is actually that G is the D sharp. So if you wanted to, you can actually leave this note out and just play these. I hold it down just because when I'm s strumming, I might hit it or even the open string by, by accident or not by accident, but you know, it's, it's okay to hit them. And then if I actually hold down a correct note, I don't have to be worried about playing a wrong note. But again, the inside melody happens, starts on the third string. And what happens here is that 
I leave these two fingers in place, the notes that are playing, the fingers that are playing the B and the G sharp, and the notes, the fingers that are playing the E and the D sharp, reverse roll. Now my second finger that has been playing the D sharp will play the E in the bass, and my first finger that was previously playing this bass note now we'll move to play the next I don't even want to call it a melody note it's just a slight change in harmony this C sharp on the third string 6th fret so the first thing to do is just kind of switch back and forth between these two positions if it's something that you're not used to well that would be a great movement exercise right there very first voicing so the melody, again, the quote-unquote melody notes are the D-sharp, C-sharp, and lastly, the B that I'm already holding down on the fourth string. So that is essentially the melody. Two D-sharps, C-sharp, and B together. in time with the rhythm and everything. See, with my first finger, I came down and hit that. But again, leave that backbeat downstroke out for now and just play. The rhythm of the melody is one, two, three, Four. I'm also arpeggiating against it this note and this is playing the quarter notes as we demonstrated one two three four so you notice the difference in volume this jumps out while the other note the, the inside note stays softer Next voicing is a G sharp minor seven in the fourth position. It's just a, a simple bar across all the strings in the fourth fret, and the melody remains exactly the same. Two C uh, D sharp notes, C sharp, and B. But of course, now that we're in a different area, we have to play them on the second string, third string, third string. So, 2nd string, 4th fret, 3rd string, 6th fret, and then release it, so together. And you notice I'm also doing a counterpoint, not a counterpoint, but a counterbalance rhythmically. Da, da, da. That's part of that arpeggiation. Even when the melody is dense, I try to throw in extra notes, because otherwise it would just be... Again, it would be, compare that to, da, da, da. there's always that extra, that in-between note. So again, a bar on the fourth fret, and the notes are... C sharp twice, D sharp, third string, sixth fret, to the B, fourth string, uh, third string, fourth fret. And the melody comes to an end, and I just play chords now. The next chord is an F sharp minor seven, and I just move that bar down two frets and just kind of separate the two parts of the chord the top are played with a bass on the one and two and three and four 
while the in between are the ands. It imitates kind of the effect of the piano. Da, 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 da. If you think about a piano player playing that motion with a right hand, right hand, left hand. This is a B7 with a flat nine. And the way I achieve it is my first finger lays across the middle, well, not the middle, but the strings four, three, and two on the th first fret. But of course, I do not play that note. Of these three notes, I only play the D sharp and the C. And together with those, I also pay, play B in the bass with my second finger on the fifth string, second fret. And also my third finger plays on the third string, second fret, this A note. So together, B, D sharp, A, and C. And end with an E major chord. Quite simple. Or if you wanted to add a little color to it, you can play it with a ninth, which is done by, instead of playing this plain position, taking this E note and moving it up a step, but keeping everything else the same. Now what I do actually is, halfway through that measure, I shift my positions just, well, for two reasons. To change the color a little bit, stay kind of with that open string sound, but also throw in that major seven. But just as importantly, to put myself in position to play what comes next, which is the melody. So putting in, putting the whole introduction together, and we talked about alternating bass notes. So right here, in fact, right here too. Just about for every bass note, for every root note that is played in the bass, you can find all alternating ba bass note just to add color, and usually that will be the five. If you're playing a bass note, a root on the fifth string, the alternating ba no bass note will be on the same fret on the sixth string. If you're playing the root note on your sixth string, the alternating five bass note would be on the fifth string two frets higher. The exception to this, of course, is chords that outright have a different kind of a five, such as a minor seven flat five chord, which is going to be actually prominent in the in the song. So that's a flat five. So the alternate bass note, if you wanted to play one, would be, of course, a flat five. But for most uh, of, of the chords, the six chords that are in the diatonic system, the six chord degrees, the one, two, three, four, five, and six, with the exception of the seventh degree, which has the flat five, all these other chords, the six of them, all have alternating bass notes, which are the five. You could also play the three as an alternating bass note, and we might do that in the song, just for color variety. So, so the point of this was that you can play All these positions have a very easily available alternating bass note that can be played. Introduction once more and then moving on. Mm -hmm. 